Right, let's do a front pose. Begin with a gesture, getting that line of action, and letting my hand feel out where this ends. So I'm not kind of trying to measure this at this point. I'm just kind of feeling it right here. I'm trusting my first intuition for that first pass. And this foot planted well underneath the shoulders. I feel like this should be longer. Fluid lines for the arm and hand placement. How close is this to the body? Where does it change direction? Hands align on an arc. Head placement, chin is overlapping into the shoulder girdle. Shortening this up a little bit. And then here going with my initial one. I'm gonna have to work my way around to that understanding. Okay, so I have my gesture loosely, rhythmically laid out. So now I'm getting into my three major masses and landmarks. Thinking about, okay, if I can see through this head, where would the tip of the egg be? Looking at this part right here, this part right here, swinging my egg through right around here. Sternum is over here, so a little on the right, a lot on the left. A lot of space there. Halfway down, somewhere around here. That first rib circle. And the neck is very overlapped by the head. But I am going to place my landmarks on the head. Just looking down. Here's the side plane, somewhere around here. The ear sticking out beyond the head shape for this one. Connecting these two ears with each other. Okay, let's go into the pelvis. So I can't see the far aces point, but I'm assuming that if I did see it, I'd get a connection like this, this kind of an angle, rather than this kind of an angle. So it's very steep, probably. So in terms of a bowl, it's spilling away from me. It's spilling away. For the box, it's like this. Right? Not seeing the top, is what I'm trying to say here. Getting this plane change. And getting my pubic arc guesstimated and my great trochanter. Okay, and then here I'm thinking about the collarbones up here. Collarbone meeting that acromion process. Collarbone meeting the chromium process. Thinking about the simple form and the simple width. Even here, I'm drawing it so I can see through that rib cage. Okay, so then I get into the smaller lumps and bumps on top of the structure. And I'm just beginning in a place where it's easy for me to understand or kind of make a guess. 
and so I think the chest is very easy to figure out. We have this beautiful giveaway right here. See this little, oops, see this little line right here? That gives us how that muscle package is heading towards that arm. So let's begin there. So I begin by just kind of thinking about, this is the about, roundabout size of this muscle group. Right around here, two thirds goes towards the arm and from the arm it goes back towards the front Think about the thickness of this kind of chest pad and when I have one side I right away go to the other side so they feel linked together and this is sticking beyond my rib cage you see that this here sticking beyond the rib cage curvature that adds height and then it goes off off to the arm and from up here it goes also over to the arm making sure that reads as one entity okay Let's get into the next muscle group. Let's do the deltoids, those shoulder pad muscles. So you see that groove in between here and here, that little triangular groove. And that swings towards the halfway point of the arm on the outside. Begin loose. Halfway. And then once I have the loose shape, I make it a bit more characteristic, try and find those peaks. Segments, one, that front segment. You see how I have this circle? I'm trying to arrange that ending point with that ellipse, just so it feels like it's part of that same form other side. There we also have this little groove in between right here. That groove tells us where the deltoid begins. Let's begin loose in general and then we tease out those apexes. Okay, and then since I'm up in that shoulder area, I might as well grab that trapezius. So again, rather than drawing a head, drawing a head here, and then just doing this sort of a thing for the neck, which doesn't give us any structure, we're understanding how this is overlapping this. And this is being overlapped. By that. And this here grabs onto the inside of the clavicle. This kind of a form here. side I have a little segment of the trapezius make this follow through okay let's go down to the abs attachment point right above the crotch somewhere around here is the edge of it find the center line of it slight twist so we start to see more up here less down there so that that implies that twist and then we have underneath the belly button or at the belly button we have our longest segment we keep those light and then we have the first short segment 
the next short segment and then that last short segment is hanging out up here and it gets steeper and steeper but we're going to bring out this here there's a thickness okay and then here that part that look at the reference that gets squished compressed grabs onto the rim of the pelvis that's where that compression starts and on this model it's not very visible but right around here is where those serratus muscles interweave with obliques again that stuff is not that important this here is important. This gets overlapped. This. 